Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in there was, as we continue our journey through the many brand offerings that our distributor Importel has to offer and uh, continue on the theme of OEM integration and OEM solutions. Um, this brand is uh, certainly always up uh, and part of the conversation when it comes to this because they offer such interesting solutions to audio integration scenarios. And that, of course, we're talking about WaveTech. So let's go ahead and bring Ramesh on, our 12-volt specialist from Importel so he could frame what we're about to talk about because it's a small lineup of products, Ramesh, but it does so much. Exactly, Ben. Um, you know, uh, Thanks for having us on again, by the way. Um, yeah, uh, Wavetech's lineup is basically all the meat and potatoes that you need, but also does all of the fringe stuff using the same SKUs. So it's a, it's a really tight lineup, but it covers... Um, more applications than I would say anybody else um, on the in the marketplace. So fewer SKUs on your shelf, uh, more applications covered, more adjustability or vehicle specific adjustments, which Jason will get into in a little bit, um, which just allow you to have fewer comebacks and uh, you know happier customers. I know we've had the opportunity to have Jason Kemmer on a couple of times already. And so we know he's very knowledgeable in this. But, um, you know, in the framing of CMA Industry Week, this is a showcase. This is where we get to show dealers what the line's all about and why they need to take a closer look at WaveTech this season. Absolutely. So, without further ado, let's bring on the co-founder and CTO of WaveTech. And welcoming back to the CMA platform, Mr. Jason Kemmer. Hey, hey Jay. <laughs> Good to see you again. Good to hey, see you back. again. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. So uh, last couple of times we had you on, we had a chance to kind of scratch the surface a little bit on one or two unique pieces that you know are you know best sellers, hot items, um, and we had a chance to talk about you know integration as a you know as a segment. This time, like I was just saying, the audience, um, I want it to be a showcase for WaveTech so the dealers can understand the line and and how it plays a critical part in their installs this year. Right. Sure. All right. So I understand you may have a presentation for us to uh, to go ahead and take yeah. a look at. Yeah, I got a presentation. We can um, we can go through kind of the background of, of why the product is needed in the marketplace, and then how we address it with with as Ramesh was saying, a very very tight lineup. Um, so we'll go through you know so, some of the models in a little more detail. But um, you know for sure, if you guys have some questions, we can we can talk about what I specifically each one does. I always like to start before we go into the slides. Maybe just a brief story about WaveTech and where you guys sit in the in the you know landscape of all things and how, yeah, how it became. Yeah, we're we've been around for about five years now, and everything everything we did was a ground up design based on you know many many years of experience. Um, you know, been in this industry for over thirty years, uh, my partner and I, and we took a look at the marketplace and and just realized there really wasn't anything that addressed all the applications in modern vehicles. Um, in, a, in a concise lineup that that was you know, easy to carry uh, for dealers, but also address sound quality and um, and certain, as Ramesh said, certain fringe cases as well. Um, and our, our our goal was the most applications and the in the fewest SKUs possible. And I think we've really achieved that with about ninety five percent application coverage uh, right now. So um, yeah, it was it was a uh, you know kind of a background of all sorts of audio stuff, but really to be that bridge in between enabling dealers to put in whatever sound system the customer wants, but, you know, be in the gateway to the best sound quality possible. And that that's really our core mission. I mean, it's also a big responsibility because they're counting on your product to make right. it happen. If it doesn't work, the rest of the system doesn't work. Yeah, yet, like so. I don't care how many boxes and drivers. Right. And if this doesn't happen. Right. No, and that's what took so much so yeah. much development. I mean, you're making something that's that's more universal than not. Um, you got to think about everything. So it took quite a long time in, in development to get everything right, and you know, make sure it sounded sounded right in in every case as well. So um, we think we we think we've got the right combination with a lot okay. of work, but we do. Yeah. Um, did you want to drive the press? I could drive it for you if you want. No, I can I could do it. All right. Um, I can just do the share button here, right? Yeah, and then we'll get going on it. Where are you located, by the way, Jay? Earthquake. I am in California. <laughs> Hence the earthquake. Yes. Okay. How do I? Okay. Uh, application window. There we go. Uh, that's a thing. Canadian that's humor. A thing. Yeah. It's Canadian humor. Yeah. Uh, it's doing something funny here now. We didn't. <laughs> do you maybe have a control of it, Ben? Do you still have control? 
Yeah, no, I can control you. No problem. Give me a second here. Okay. All right, we're ready right. to go. Yeah, I did change a couple minor things, but um, it's not a deal. Uh, can you see my screen now? No, I can't. But look, here we go. No. Can you can here you share go. my screen? No, nope, but I already have your presentation no. loaded up on the screen. There you go. Do you see it? Yeah, just go back to the screen where we are all on stream right here on our studio. Do we lose his audio? Jason, talk. We may have lost your audio. Oh, there, oh, there he's you back. Go. There he's back. There. Can you hear us, Jason? I don't think he can. Hmm. Hmm. That's too bad. We have our presentation ready to go. Well, we'll give him a second. Ramesh, on that on that topic, while Jason's getting back uh, connected, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I know how well you guys are doing with this product, so it's hard for me to pretend like well, I don't. Um, uh, so, well, I mean, here, let me, let me, Jason's uh, very humble. So um, he, he was mentioning his kind of background a little bit or um, uh, his past experience. Uh, he formerly engineered many, many amplifier and speaker solutions. The amplifier solutions come with, as you mentioned earlier, the, hey, my stuff doesn't work. Hey, but there really, we are. There you go. Yeah. Really, it was the integration units in the middle. Which is how wave tech kind of fits into all that because gotcha. if you're selling big old amplifiers that cost lots of lots of money and you got everything in there and then it's making weird sounds because there is no integration or appropriate integration available 10 15 years ago um jason probably knows from okay. experience what those phone calls look like firsthand all right so did you want to go ahead and drive did you want to go yeah. ahead and drive that jason all right yeah can you see my screen now Absolutely. If you want to go okay, ahead and yes. put that to full screen, then we'll be yep. we'll be ready right. and off to the races. Yeah, it kicked me out of uh audio for some reason. It was it was Chrome that locked up. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Here we go. All yeah. right, great. So um, with that all that aside, sorry about that. We'll get right into it. So um, as I was mentioning, you know, a little bit of background of of why this category exists, uh, just just really briefly here. So you know, back in the day there was a lot of good reasons to remove radios, but replacing the radio by itself uh, today won't necessarily make it sound any better anymore. And that, that's for a variety of reasons, not only because radios weren't that great back then, but but also um, there's a lot of features that come in, in modern radios. So, you know, adding features is great, but you also have to be aware of what you're working with. And um, there's a lot of vehicles that you may not be aware of. You may actually end up losing some features like for example, this this uh, 2018 Tacoma, um, and actually a lot of Tacomas have have an all pass filter on the driver's side, which which actually improves uh, mid bass and um, and sound from both seats. Um, so so overall, I mean, OEM radios are a lot better than they than they used to be, um, and you know, many aftermarket radios, for that matter, don't necessarily prioritize uh, sound quality over over features either. I mean, back in the day, you know, a a, a four volt pre out was a big deal um and it was a discrete you know dc to dc but but nowadays it can even be just a step down from the speaker level output so so uh in a lot of cases uh, keeping the fact the radio is a good thing to do just for for sound but not only not only sound but they're getting more and more difficult to remove um in some cases it'll cost you way more to remove uh, to replace the radio um uh just in accessories in the radio itself so so um and to that point, you know, there, there's a big issue with with level matching and sound quality, not only with with OEM radios, but aftermarket radios as well. Um, you know, an example here, if you can see it on the screen with the with the red sine wave down there, that's that's the clipping point of, say, the internal amp of an aftermarket radio or an or an OEM radio where you get up about three quarters or two thirds of the volume and it starts clipping. But those supposed four volt or five volt pre outs. Are, are only that when the radio volume is turned all the way up. Um, and so you can imagine what's gonna happen when, when your main speakers are clipping and you're just adding a sub, that you're only getting half a volt output on those pre-outs. So what, do you, what are you forced to do? You're forced to turn the gain all the way up on the amp and it's gonna sound like junk. Um, so, so by having an actual gain with a line driver type, type uh, preamp, 
um, the sound quality difference is amazing. And, and this is just a, a you know a typical customer a comment about about the sound differences. You know, before the gain was three quarters of the way up, now it's almost all the way down, but it hits quite as hard. And that's just a real layman's explanation, a general consumer's explanation of what dynamic range uh, sounds like. Um, and so that's that's really what we're what we're after. And with that, I'll kind of explain. You know, there's a lot of ways to do to add stuff into vehicles. The, the The problem is you need to you need to think about it as the new source because basically your your interface, in our case, our our line driver and and LOCs really are the new head unit because they're providing the amplifier with with the source signal and and how it sounds throughout the rest of the system. So really, it's it's the master preamp of the system. And you know, I know there's there's probably quite a few guys out there still using pla passive LOCs, but I can I can tell you they're they're you're really doing a disservice to your to your customer, especially the kind of equipment they're buying, um, because there's there's some huge differences between ha having an active um, an active LOC in, in line driver. Everything from you know frequency response to clean signal, but you know true isolation and noise rejection, and being able to accept any any vehicle voltage that's out there. With and providing your amplifiers, your aftermarket amplifiers with a high voltage and a, and a low impedance, to so you can make sure you're maximizing the performance. And and because it's active, you can have things like gain and crossover and and EQ, um, aux sources, all that kind of stuff. Um, but what that that equates to is is dynamic range and signal quality. So you know, and Romesh, you can speak to this maybe when we get a little bit further, but but. One of our core philosophies was to to start getting guys to turn down the gain on their amplifier because we're providing such a such a good clean um, strong source signal that that's the best you can do for signal and noise in your system is turn your amplifier gains all the way down and use ours as a source. So you'll you'll find in most cases with a typical um, OEM system that the amp, certainly the amp gain should be all the way down, but our gains will only be up you know maybe nine or ten o'clock. And uh, that'll be giving you at least four or five volts clean signal, enough to drive almost all amplifiers to full output. Um, of course, we can go all the way up over 10 volts if, if needed. But with passive uh, high-low converters, uh, especially the, uh, the transformer types, they, although they, while they can isolate, they actually add a lot of distortion and noise, and, um, and they're only attenuators. So if, if you have that gain imbalance I was, I was talking about, which you always will with a subwoofer add-on, um, you're really not going to be able to get very good sound quality, and and you know for the for the dealers, you know when the customer comes in and pays good money for for a good quality amplifier, having having a weak link as the signal source is, is really doing disservice. Not only not only because it degrades the amp performance, but other add-ons to improve the performance aren't going to do anything because you know a high low converter, passive high low, is already going to be degrading the amp performance, or it might so, melt. Or it might melt. Yeah, I mean, even <laughs> you know, even in uh, even in in non-amplified systems, I mean, they can they can melt. You guys have all seen it uh, over the years. So, um, but here's just some technical uh, data behind it. But the the bottom line is is having an active uh, preamp is is the only way to go for for sound quality. Um, so you know, as I mentioned before, uh, we have a very very concise lineup. Actually, only six main SKUs right now. Um, and that ranges from two channel all the way up to eight channel, and they do they do a variety of different things. Um, but they're all line drivers except for the the Link Two, which is a dedicated high level or speaker level input, um, doesn't have the RCA inputs. Um, and then all the way up to you know the Link Four and Six and Eight for a lot of vehicles like that that 2016 Silverado I mentioned. That actually even that that super small uh, 4.3 inch screen base radio actually has an active two way front, and without summing you can't get a, a full range front signal out of it so um and these can be combined together you know you can you can use a you know link link four along with a base rest restore or or link dq on the base side um depending on how many channels you have to deal with um and then we have a couple of accessories to go along with it um and i'll get into those uh briefly but i'm um, just going to focus first and foremost on what makes our product so much different and why we spent so much time in uh, in the design phase to make sure it did everything right and covered the most vehicles possible. So um, you don't have to read all this. It's just background. But there's really there's about you know eight or eight or nine things that really make 
the, the core DNA of, of WaveTech and what goes through every model throughout the line. So really, once you understand this, the only difference between the models are, are features. Um, all of them have the sound performance built in. Uh, so, so like I said, they're they're all light line output converters or line drivers. The only one that's not not a line driver as well is the Link Two. Um, you can get uh, over ten volts RMS out of out of all of our models, uh, no matter what the input uh, signal range uh, signal is, anything from two volts all the way to forty volts RMS. And the way we did that uh, in, intentionally actually is is broke that up into two gain ranges, um, so it's a dual input range. So out of the box, you're, you're guaranteed to get uh, plenty signal uh, without having the gains up hardly at all. But then as you go up in some of the you know more powerful factory systems, the amplified systems, you have an additional range up to 40 volts. And what that does is it, it, it keeps the signal and noise as, as maximized all the way. Because if you have a, a gain that goes from you know zero to light, I mean, you're never going to get it adjusted right it's always it's always going to be too finicky to get things adjusted right and it adds a lot of noise so so we we really uh, focused on the sound quality end of that but also the usability um of, of that and and that's that's one of the main differences you'll notice right away if you've ever played with anything else out there um is how we approach that of course balanced differential inputs the low impedance outputs i, I mentioned less than 50 ohms output impedance so that just means no noise can get injected into the into the RCA lines uh, down the road, and you can drive as many amplifiers as you want, pretty much off of off of uh, any any one of these outputs. So you can split it however many times, however many amplifiers you have running in parallel. Um, another really u unique thing that we've done since the beginning, um, and as far as I know, nobody else does this. We actually have independent turn on modes. So out of the box, both audio detect and uh, DC offset for speaker level detect are on. And so on our models that have, um, you know, a separate aux in, it has an audio detect on that. Same with the, uh, the RCA inputs. And then on the speaker lines, it has, uh, it has the audio detect and DC offset simultaneously. So once you get the whole system put away, it, you know, you don't want to have to go back and, and find out whether or not you had the right thing turned on. Uh, we have them both on all the time because you don't know what you're connecting to, right? It could be a, a class D factory amplifier that doesn't have any DC on it. Um, or you could be driving it directly from from a phone source or a Bluetooth dongle. So, so those are those are important, and they're both defeatable, um, independently defeatable. So you can have one or the other, or or defeat both if if you need to. Um, and then of course, it generated a twelve volt remote out that's based on that that turn on mode. Um, we have we, another thing we've done since the beginning that's uh, that this unique to us is we've always had the the OEM load detect um, compatibility, the loading built in. Now, lately, uh, in the last several years, there's been a few vehicles out there that actually require a little more loading than we have built in, and we do have a just a plug-and-play little little uh, 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 loading module called the Link LD that you can plug in. That's for like newer Chryslers, um, 15 and up. It started. It was kind of a mixed bag, uh, mostly non-amplified, and then there's a few amplifieds that have it um, as well. But 18 and up, that loading changed again, and so we've we've kept kept up with that, and um, it's it's a very simple solution. The beauty of that, uh, though, is having that loading built in versus no loading at all is, you know, if you don't get sound, that's what the issue is. Instead of wasting an hour or two trying to find out why you don't have sound, you know, if you don't get it, that's got to be it because we already have loading built in. And then the, the last couple details are just about the, you know, the design of the product itself. You know, as being an ex-installer myself, my partner as well for many, many years, um, we thought about all these products from an installer's point of view. And simple things like locking terminals, locking detachable terminals, when you're tucking this thing away behind a, you know, footwell or, or um, you know, under the dash, you, you don't want to have the plug come out when you're doing that, right? <laughs> oh, so, 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 uh, you know, if you if you if you play with one, I mean, try it. You know, you could try to pull the pull the terminal out of these things. They're definitely locking. They're pretty good. And then then uh, things like the panel mount RCAs, super solid. No matter how strong the 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 forces on your on your RCAs, those are going to hold up. And just making them as small as possible. Um, the, the the small chassis with the rounded rounded edges again is to facilitate tucking it away, making it as small as possible. And we went to pretty extreme lengths to uh, to make these things really small. Um, I don't know. Can you see this here on on your screen, Ben? Give me one second. I will put that up. There you go. There you go. All right. So if you. If you can see that, um, that's what the inside of uh, one of our, our previous models, the Link D, which actually started it all, 
Um, it looks like a mini amplifier inside, and this actually has components on both sides of the board um, to make it as small as possible, literally as small as possible. Um, so this thing's only only about uh, you know two three inches wide by two and a half inches uh, long. So um, yeah, that's that's part of part of every design uh, that we've done is is to make it as small as possible. And so that's that's really it. I mean, once you understand all this, you know what makes us tick and why we sound better and why we work the way we do. Um, and you know, intentionally so, uh, we we chose these these attributes to to be the best for sound and the best for installation. Jason, oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so you did mention um, that uh, both uh, uh, both forms of uh, detection are turned on out of the box. Yeah. Um, what what's the um, uh, input range set to? Uh, the input range is by default is set to the twenty volt range out of the box. So, and most OEM radios are are ten volts. So that's why right. um, you don't need to mess with the gain hardly at all. Right. Um, but the in only the case one... of like an amplified BMW or something like that, where the customer's going in and he knows what it is, th would that be a case where he he'd want to open it up and switch it to forty? Maybe it depends on the amplifier he's using because some amplifiers have a high low range switch as well. So you know, keep in mind that our our all of our uh, preamps are going to kick out up up to ten volts. So if you put twenty volts in, uh -huh. you're going to get ten volts out, and that may be okay for gain overlap with a uh, with an amp that has you know an eight volt range, right? Um, you know, but in some cases, yeah, you know, if it's a if it's a Burmeister or or some of the B and O's uh, F one fifty B and O's and stuff, yeah, you're probably going to want to move that to the 40 volt range, um, which reminds me of a couple other things to mention. Um, one, one is the, the built-in loading we have. Uh, we made a couple changes, uh, running changes, and that's just, that's just what we've been doing all along. We've actually had probably uh, three updates uh, to all of our models as we've gone along, um, just for convenience or just to you know, find a new application. One is you can actually remove the, uh, the built-in loading you know, for some of these really high voltage systems that don't need it. Um, you know, and there's some cases where the factory sub is such a low impedance that adding adding loading to it actually, you know, makes the amp work a little too hard, uh, may and it may protect. So you can you can remove remove the loading on on all of them now, where that used to only be on the link four, six, and eight. And the other big change we made um, is on the uh, on on the jumpers on the outside. We moved the the uh, auto turn on jumpers from the inside to the outside because that's one of the more common things you're going to be. You're going to be changing uh, in systems, and so we we deleted the the obsolete uh, um, ground jumper. Really, that was a legacy for older vehicles, and we found that we didn't need it just because of the way our our differential front end was designed. So that's been deleted and replaced, or moved those internal jumpers moved to the outside now. Oh, very good. Yeah. So, um, and here's here's just another consolidation and, and us keeping our, our lineup streamlined, we actually have taken three models and converged them into one. What used to be the Link D and the Link Q and the Base Freak are now all combined into one model, um, the Link DQ. And I, I can show you here, if you give me the screen, I can kind of show you the size difference. So this is a Link D here and then a link dq so it's just slightly longer but we've added all sorts of uh, equalization functionality and moved the controls to the top and as i was mentioning we we added we moved the uh the auto turn on jumpers to the outside and added remote level control um capability so um whereas with the link q the link q is definitely a little bit bigger um it came with a remote, but in, in some cases, you know, the ant may already come with a remote, so uh, it's now an it's now an option. But these two things combined are actually a better value than even the the link link Q was with a better EQ because now it's it's a it's a true parametric, um, so you have adjustable width on it now, and um, and it gives you the remote ready. That's awesome. So. Yeah, so just a couple of system examples, and um, I didn't I didn't put a slide up with the Link Two because it's basically everything the Link DQ does except without the EQ and without the RCA inputs. Um, so uh, yeah, it's 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 really simple to understand. But with with all of the other models that have the RCA in, you can use them with a with an OEM radio or an aftermarket radio, or even in the case of the Link DQ, because of um, the RCA inputs, you can. Just plug a phone directly into it or a Bluetooth dongle, and it can be your your master system preamp. 
Um, we get a lot of these, uh, just like the Link Q, but now the Link DQ, we get a lot of these being used in classic cars uh, where you don't want to put a, a modern radio in it or motorcycles, side-by-sides, golf carts. So really wide variety of applications um, uh, for the Link DQ. And so then another specialty piece uh, dedicated to, to base primarily is the base restore. And um, this is this is a really, really new way of thinking about this this 30 plus year old category. We, you know, we essentially reinvented the category by looking at it with a completely different point of view and starting from a ground up design. So everything I just explained before uh, with with the link D and the link DQ and all that DNA is in our base restore. With, which is a base restoration processor, but it's also a line driver, it's also a preamp, it's also an LOC. So you get all of that functionality in one, plus unbelievable bass control, especially not just for not just for music content that doesn't have that much bass in it, but also for, for factory systems that uh, don't have that, they have some kind of bass roll off, you can compensate for that with it. Um, but primarily it's it's made to, to deal with the differences in music content. I mean, if you go from, uh, you know, a, a, a 80s, 80s metal that has no bass, you want to have, you want to have some <clears throat> bass restoration adding that bass effect. But then if you go to a modern, modern rap or R&B song that has tons of bass with, with any other design, you would have to just turn the effect down, but those are all one-to-ones, you know, you don't have any, you don't have any volume, you don't have any gain. So this is actually, if you can, if you can close in here, I can show you this knob that's on the screen. So, this this knob actually does three things. Um, so you have your your main volume, which is your traditional sub level control. The outer ring is the effect level, um, and if you push the knob, that defeats the base effect, the base restoration effect. So instead of messing around with your your effect level all the time, when the next song comes along that has plenty of bass, you can just turn it off. But you can still use the main knob as your sub level control as a as a true line driver, uh, true sub level preamp. Um, control and that that just makes a world of difference. You don't have to have two remotes in the car. Um, you don't have to keep readjusting it to where you thought you liked it before, and uh, and so that's a big deal. That makes it really unique. And the other thing that makes it really unique is is all the top panel controls. Um, so everything's fully variable on here. So the effect is basically your limiter. That's that's the maximum effect that uh, base restoration effect that could be added. And then you have your width and your frequency, which is how wide the effect is and where it's centered. Um, but you notice it has a gain on it because this is a true preamp. And I don't believe anything else in this category, uh, if not very few, actually have a true gain. Um, so this will act as your as your master preamp as well. And uh, and then we have a subsonic, of course, that's variable from 15 to 50 hertz. So that'll protect your subs from over excursion um, if you like to get happy with the with the restoration effect. So. <laughs> so that's that's pretty much it with the base restore. Are there any questions on the base restore first? Because this this one is, um, I, you know, I highly recommend you guys to try it. It's not like the old school stuff um, where it's only for ridiculous base. It actually and and it doesn't. One other big point: it does does not require a full range signal to operate. It can already be a factory low pass signal or an aftermarket low pass signal. So you can put this after a crossover, after DSP, after. Uh, you know, a factory sub channel and dial in that base that you that you really want. So this is really just an active LOC with base restoration. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So it does yeah. everything the previous model, the other slide does, but now add the base control and the effect control through the multi purpose knob. That's right. right. Exactly. Yep. I like I like your example because yeah, in my family, all different kinds of music and yeah. one, one setting won't do it. Right, right, yeah. exactly, yeah. and you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to keep uh, changing it back and forth. So, so with that, and I'll get into the the uh, summing processors, and that's that's the rest of the line, really. So we have a we have a four, six, and eight channel. Um, the four channel, well, all of them are unique because of the way we do our do our summing. But to start with the the four channel uh, is the only uh, true four in four out um, with independent summing, and you can actually retain sub level control even when you're summing a two way. And I'll get into some examples in the next slide uh, to show you how that works. So, so the Link 4 sums up to channel 1, 2. So that pass-through channel, which is your, your door woofer, for example, in a two-way front, is, is still going to your subwoofer amps while you still have 
sub-level control over that channel, but you're also getting the summed full range signal out of, out of channel one too. Um, so, so link four is the only one that sums up. The other one's summed down and that allows some really unique features uh, like the ability to separate uh, front and rear. In the case of uh, you know, a two-way front and a full range rear, you can sum the front and leave the rear pass through. You can even sum those two together, uh, all, all three together, say for a three-way, you can sum a, a, a high, a mid, and a low together and then reroute that back to your channel one, two, so you can still keep uh, an independent sub-level control. So I think with that, it's probably better just to show some pictures. Um, but one other thing uh, to cover before I get into that is the remote, which is also extremely nice. unique um, to us. This is, uh, this is actually a, a, a multifunction remote. In most cases, you don't need to do anything because out of the box, by default, it's, it's those last two channels as the sub-level control. Um, but all, all three of those models have an auxiliary input, so you can actually change source um, if you enable, those with the, enable that function with the, uh, the dip switches on the back. So the dip switches on the back actually give you four different knob function modes, essentially. Um, so by default, it's just, it's just sub-level. Um, if you add an aux to the system, then you would engage you know, type, the system type two that would give you still just, just sub-level on the, on, the, on the main speaker level inputs, but it would also give you a press and hold independent sub-level for your aux, whether that's a Bluetooth phone or your phone, because those generally don't have as good bass response. Um, and you can you can set that separately, and, and it will remember it because there's a microprocessor inside, so this is all digitally controlled. Um, and like you know, for the the side by sides or golf carts, you know, if you want an independent sub channel, but also a master preamp, you may not actually even have speaker level input. So you can defeat the ability to change back to the speaker level input and just have an aux only system, like like the uh, the Link Four gets used for a lot. Um, and then, um, you know, you have the full-blown Type 4, which is uh, for, you know, OEM systems that have um, non-defeatable uh, volume-dependent EQ and things like that. You can use, use the remote as your master volume control and still have an independent sub-level and even add an aux if, if you need to. So really a unique piece. Um, and as you can see from the picture, you can completely disassemble it and flush it um, with only taking a couple screws out. And, uh, and I forgot to mention, all of our remotes use a standard Ethernet cable, eight-wire Ethernet cable. They all come with a five-meter cable, but you can use any, any uh, standard Cat5 or Cat6 cable and make your own lengths as you see fit. So, um, so back to the, the two-way summing, this is just a visualization of how the Link, the Link 4 works. So if you have a, uh, you know, a two-way a two front, you can sum that to, to feed, say, for example, a, a, a five-channel amp. Um, and channel three, four is still passed through. So you still have control over the channel three, four level, which is your sub level. Um, so that's how you retain um, sub level control, even with, with a two way factory front. And uh, then link six, obviously you got two more channels to deal with. So you can do a two way front and a rear. You can do six in, four out, six in, six out. You can actually preserve fading. Um, it may be a little hard to see, but there's actually uh, uh, this optional switch here, which is under channel one and two. Um, which allows you to redirect whatever that, that final signal is on, on the last two channels back up to channel one and two. So in this case, it would be uh, copying uh, the signal from channel five, six back to one, two. So this allows you to still have a separate sub output, even though you've used all channels to sum a three-way. And that carries through uh, in the next example uh, as well um, with a full three-way. And then uh, a really unique example here is is a, two-way front and a two-way rear. Uh, just just had a had a call about this the other day with the 2020 RAM with the Harman Kardon system. It doesn't actually have a true subwoofer channel uh, in, in the vehicle, um, but it has a two-way front, two-way rear, actually two-way front plus a passive uh, tweeter on there. And so you can sum those two, two independently. And by manipulating the switches on, on top, you can actually separate the front sum from the rear sum. So this is totally different than how any bus sum type system works, where you can actually decide, okay, how far down the chain do you want that sum to continue? And if you want to preserve fading, you can, you can separate those two um, by the switch. And uh, so this is a unique case where rerouting that channel 7, 8 signal back up to 1, 2 would, would give you the, it kind of reverses your, your outputs, right? Your channel 1, 2 would be your rear and your channel 3, 4 would be the sum of the front but you still got that separate uh, subwoofer output that's, that's uh, from the rear um, that you can adjust with the remote. 
Um, and that that's really that's really it for the for the audio section of the line. I got a couple more uh, slides. One on a on a really unique piece that I know uh, Importel does really well with, um, which is our IRAD. It's it's not an audio piece, but it is related. Um, you know, because a lot of vehicles today don't have. Oh, I think I just lost. Right. Did you lose me? Uh, you just paused there. Can you hear me? Uh, we can now. Okay. Okay. So, so even even though all of our uh, all of our preamps have auto detect uh, for for any any case any system, um, there are situations where you may not want to wait for the factory signal to turn off, or um, you're adding a um, a dash cam or a radar detector or something, and it's just not worth your time digging for that that 12 volt trigger that may or may not even be there. Um, and so this, that's where IRAD comes in. It's, it's primarily an ignition generator um, that's easily programmable within a few minutes. I don't know if you can if you can zoom in on the picture here, but I can show you literally how small this thing is. You got the camera up there on me? Oh, yep. yes. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, this thing is tiny, um, and it takes literally less than one minute to program it. And once it learns the vehicle running voltage and, and uh, off engine off voltage, uh, from then on, every time you turn on the, you start the car, it'll it'll generate a uh, a triggered out. But it also it also has delays, so um, you can use it just for straight up uh, ignition generation. But you can also use it to solve uh, system pop issues, which you know just it, it it happens. You know, depending on the vehicle and and the brand of amplifiers and what their turn on time, you may get just a a, a slight difference in turn on timing. Um, that the only way to get rid of it is is to cause some delay, and you can use this even without programming the ignition part. Just as a straight up delay, you can delay up to five seconds turn off and up to five seconds turn on, um, just with the remote pass through. What uh, what applications are, are dealers uh, using that for, Ramesh? Um, uh, like Jason was saying, vehicles where there's a turn on kind of turn on turn off pop sometimes for uh, automations. Where they want something or lighting something, they need something to turn on for uh, a certain period of time or turn off. Um, there's also a uh, uh, for start stop vehicles. Mm, I was wondering um, about that. Yeah, I did. I don't know if we got to that uh, that setting over there in the in the right side of the the diagram. Yeah, well, there's but, actually uh, there's actually a couple different ways to use it for start stop. I mean, first and foremost, when you're using this to generate <laughs> an ignition based on the engine running, if the vehicle turns off all the time, you're going to lose your trigger, right? So, so you can you can actually delay the the ignition turn off by up to ten minutes. You know, typically you're not going to run into a stoplight that long, but um, but yeah, up to ten minutes you can you can keep that that output activated even if it's a stop start car uh, to keep that that trigger generated. And, and um, the, sorry, does that turn on with the ignition or? Uh, it turns on with when the engine is started, when the alternator the, once starts, it started. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Once okay. the engine is running, uh, the alt it recognizes the change in voltage because of the alternator. And um, normally, if if we didn't have that delay in there, every time the engine shut off at a stoplight, you'd lose that trigger that's powering your system, right? Now it makes so, sense. Gotcha. So, but the last system um, example here is just the third thing that it does, and and that's really for for larger systems that, um, you know, when you're playing a system loud and every time the engine cranks, your amplifiers reset and maybe causes a big system pop. Um, this is the true solution for that because, because of the, the intelligence in this, it's monitoring the, the, the running voltage um, all the time. It'll actually control a battery isolation solenoid automatically. So every time you come up to a stop, It'll separate the batteries and let your system run off the auxiliary uh, battery, and then join them back together every time after it's after it's running again. So your your sound system will never see that that starter cranking voltage drop. And um, you know a lot of times you can get away with just putting a, a small aux battery uh, by the amplifiers, but for anything over maybe 500 watts, you're probably going to need to do something more dramatic if if that particular vehicle has a really severe uh, voltage drop. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's that's really that's really what the iRide does. Three core things. A um, bunch of examples, like I was saying. I know I know a lot of the guys I talked to um, uh, through Importel up there. They they uh, they use it for powering small electronics directly, dash cams and whatnot. Dash cams. Um, I was just thinking about that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And um, it's just a time saver. Yeah. I just want to give you a time check here, Jay. You got about five minutes to wrap it up. Yeah, well, that's it. Um, that's it here. It's the Link LD, uh, which is our little add-on uh, loading module, and then 
um, there's the whole feature chart. So with that, I can um, you can just see the only difference between them is or is the is the features. So the I'll go back really to. Cool. Uh, do you have a link LD uh, handy there, Jason? I do. And yeah, I'll go back to my screen here. Yeah. Link LD is really tiny, and it just plugs just plugs straight into the input. Here, I'll grab a link DQ here. I'm sorry, Joe. What does the Link LD do? The Link LD just provides a little bit more loading to the factory radio. Um, so we already have loading built in into all of our units, but if uh, in in some cases, like some newer Chryslers, they need they need a little bit less under under about 40, 45 ohms. So this is actually combined. This is forty five ohms with our one eighty built in. It actually drops the total load to thirty six. Two of them together drops it to twenty for those those rare corner cases. Some some special Subarus and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so just keep a, keep a handful of these around uh, just in case. So you don't have to have to make your own, but I mean, you can make your own if, if you want, um, but super small and just plugs right in line, real easy to deal with. Right, so what? Uh, why I was kind of uh, pointing that out is, uh, Jason had uh, mentioned earlier, you know, you've got that, uh, that built-in uh, load and then there are gonna be cars where you're gonna turn the car on and it's gonna do something. You'll be like, oh man, what do I do? Well, yeah. it's literally unplug, plug in line, plug back in, right. start the car, problem goes away, kick the car out, you know. So if you do run into it, you don't really run into a problem because it takes about 10 seconds right. to, to yeah. fix it. So it's yeah. not really a problem, right? As so long as it took to go to the counter to go to the drawer. It took you longer to do that and, and, pull it it out, and pull it out of the plastic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 no, exactly. Right. Okay, yeah. Right, yeah. so you don't need to inventory. There, you know, there are different solutions from different manufacturers out there where you have, you know, you know, multiple SKUs on the shelf and you need to know, you know, which is the secret decoder ring for this particular vehicle right. and whatever. There's no, there's no hocus pocus. It's just plug the one SKU in. So, you know, keep four, keep four of them in stock and you'll never, you know, when you sell them, just reorder the, right. the link LDs. That's it. I got to say, um, here's my comments, my takeaways. I, I really think this is a really uh, smartly developed and, and designed lineup because it's so simple. If I can understand it, man, anybody can understand it. I can tell you that right now. Um, you know, the the summing and all that stuff, you know, I'm not quite there personally on a technical level, but I understand what it does, and, and I understand why you need it. But let me ask you, Jay, from the lineup of products that you uh, offer, I mean, I've got to think that it's those first three items that sell the most. Yeah, for sure. For sure, yeah. Right, yeah. That takes up most of the channel pieces. Because as we all know, I mean, the, the, the best thing to start with when you're upgrading sound is adding a subwoofer to a factory system, right? So, of course. So, and and that you can you can handle pretty much with any of our two-channel models. It just depends how you want to do it, yeah. Uh, can I, what is the price difference between the base restoration and just and the regular one um, on it's retail? Not, it's not quite twice. I mean, I don't almost. know what the retail is. It's, all, it's, it's almost Not quite double. twice as much. Yeah, it's almost yeah. double. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just curious because you know, it's kind of like a two and one. You may as well just get that one. I, I, I'm just right. trying to, you know. I agree. Yeah. I right. mean, it's it's right. it's 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 that the functionality of the of the the knob and the way it's set up with independent um, mass or master bass volume, if you will, and then mm -hmm. effect, yes. and then the ability to just one tap turn it off. Yes. That's like, I don't. I mean, if it's in the deal and if you can fit it in the deal. Um, Right, it's it's a no brainer. I just think you're gonna have happier. I think you're gonna have happier customers, is what I'm getting. I agree. At. Yeah, because I mean, you'll never run into a problem. No, there's the size difference between the Link DQ and the and the base restore. So I mean, it is definitely a little bit a little bit well, bigger as well. But but you can do so much with the Link DQ because of this parametric EQ. You can you can actually tune a, a system really really well if you don't have dramatic. You know uh, things going on with with music content differences. But of course, that's that's cool to have. But you um, get the cool I mean, knob. You don't yeah, get the cool you, knob. You can. It's a different knob, right? And the, and the remote is available separately, um, so it is it is a different remote. Um, kind of had me at the knob, but uh, yeah, the knob is the knob is very cool. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I'm, you know, I, I I always try to put myself, um, and what we're trying to do is always try to ask the questions that the dealers want to ask. And you know, price is one thing, but features versus price is is what is always the constant battle. And if you already have the customer down to upgrading his original sound system. You have you explain to him why he needs this device because you know to integrate into a sound. You obviously already sold them on an amp, you've sold them on a sub, you sold them on bus, you sold them on install, you maybe even sold them on some sound deadening. Right. That but all that he doesn't touch right. once it's installed. Yeah. This 
this is gross what I'm doing, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. This is what he's touching. And this is what connects him physically to his sound system. Yeah. So I yeah, feel that that connection. is a critical point. Yeah. Like, articulating, articul articulating on the sales floor um, what the finished product is going to be and the features it's going to have using the base restore. You can always go down. You can always sell down, right? Top down. Sell yeah. You can always sell down sure. from the feature if, yeah. you know, if there's a price objection or, you know, what have you. But that type of integrated solution. What are we talking about? 100, 200 bucks? Uh, difference? I'm talking difference. At, at oh, retail. difference? difference uh, at retail. No. No, okay. less, less, less than that. It, so this is what I'm saying. Yeah. It's just one right. of those, I don't know. It's easy upgrade. Yeah. That's what I think. I, or, or I would say this is what you need. Why? Because you can control this. And you know when you play this music, right. it's done. And that's, what, that's the top down. Yeah. Sell, right. Yeah. Explain yeah. it that way. And I mean, them, the line. Um, you know. Overall, I mean, the line is so compact that there's really no reason not not to have some of everything for whatever. No, and that's, and, and that's the enough. point. I mean, if you if you have the whole whole line there, you can address any car that comes in your door. Ready for but, every scenario. But for sure, the Link 2, the Link DQ, that's that's going to be your bread and butter everyday yeah. stuff. And and then for the bigger bigger base systems that can really benefit from having that base restoration, sure. um, you know, that definitely should be one you should have around too. Link 4 gets used a, a ton. Link six, link eight. You know, you need to know what what the vehicle is. But even even like I was. Oh, he was on the flow. So he was oh, okay. so, uh, all right. Okay, Jake, sorry. Bro. Okay. No room. Hey, man. Thanks so much for joining us again. Got our learn on, broke it down for us. Really appreciate it. And I know that we'll be chit chatting again on an upcoming uh, CMA episode. Sounds great. Thanks for having Looking me again. Forward to it. Thanks, Jason. All right. Take, Take care, care, you guys. Thanks. Yeah, nifty, real nifty lineup there. That, um, yeah, yeah. It's the wave, one. no, the Wave Tech lineup is it's that's a it's good tight. one. It is, that's it is. It's not hard to sell, and uh, more of anything, it's just about education, right? So hopefully, people dealers saw this and understood what it's about. And uh, of course, they can always reach out to you, Mister Twelve Volt Specialist at Importel. <laughs> I'm and, here. Ask the questions. Myself, Kelly, Frank. You bet. You the give whole us team. a call. We with Wave Tech, we've uh, we think we've all got that one pretty sorted. Yeah, you probably make yeah, a lot of customers a lot. happy once they figure out what that is and you send it to them. You got it. All right, Ramesh. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. Yes. There you have it, guys. Wave Tech and Jason Kemmerer, CTO, from uh, joining us again and laying out the entire lineup, which isn't a super deep lineup, as we mentioned, but certainly a lineup that you need to take a closer look at, especially for OEM integration. Hey, that's it for this session. As we continue with Importel during CMA Industry Week, I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect.